everyone. It's good to be here with you. I know I've met a lot of you before, but for those of you I haven't met, I'm Jessie. Um, I've been friends with Eileen since we were in grad school together here in the LA area, and I currently work as a music teacher. And so today, Eileen and I are going to show you a few different call and response ideas to use with students in a music classroom. Uh, so first things first, I'm going to pick up this drum here. And I'm not a drummer. You don't have to really be a drummer either. The purpose is just learning how to create beats and um, really like listen to what the other person is doing. So an easy thing that I like to start off with is just doing variations of one, two, three, four. So it might be something like this. Or I might change it up a little bit to be something like this. Or maybe this one. Really the only thing I'm thinking of is that the pattern lasts for four counts. So whatever is going on, it equals roughly to four. And so Eileen and I are going to show you how we would do that in a classroom. I'm going to be the teacher, Eileen will be the student. So I'll play a four count rhythm and she is going to respond on her instrument. Here we go. My turn. Go. Again. Now I'm going to change it up a little bit. I'm going to add in some of those faster notes that you heard in my examples a, a minute ago. Go. Nice. And something else that's kind of fun that I like to do in the classroom is have the students lead. So you could pick a student to pick a rhythm of their own, or they could use one that you already did, but that way it gives them a chance to lead the room and give students an opportunity to think of their own kinds of rhythms. So in this example, Eileen is going to lead us through a rhythm of her choice, and I'm going to respond. And another thing is your students don't have to have a drum for this. A lot of the groups I've worked with like, oh, maybe we had enough drums for like a few kids, but we couldn't all have drums at the same time. So what we would do is we would take turns using the drums and whoever didn't have one would clap it. So in this example, Eileen will do a rhythm and I'll just use my hands to clap it. For some of the faster notes, I like to clap on my knees. That way I can alternate my hands. But for some of the claps that like aren't so fast, I might just clap my hands together. But you'll see what I mean. don't quite remember the rhythm you can always repeat it and be like oh I think we didn't quite get that one raise your hand if you want to hear it again and sometimes even if my students don't want to hear it again I make them hear it again because they're still not getting it <laughs> another option that is super helpful is using a metronome along with the beat I'm just using an app on my phone called metro timer but there are a bunch of different ones um, 
on phones or if you google the word metronome one will pop up and this is totally optional like i don't always have my phone on me or don't always have access to a metronome so you don't have to do it but if you're practicing keeping a really steady beat it can help to set one in the background so i have my metronome set to this is what it looks like set to 66 and this is what the steady beat sounds like a little bit faster than what Eileen and I were playing. Can we do a couple rhythms with the metronome on? Mm -hmm. Cool. All right. So here is one option. gives you an idea of some kinds of activities you can do either with drums or without. Uh, we usually call these like a call and response activity. The person leading would be the person calling and then the other person would be the one responding. So that's sort of where that, that name comes from. Um, you can also do this with singing rhythms, with just clapping or even with walking around. So this is really just a basic idea of something you can try and let us know how it goes. <laughs>